Four, we have a look at everything happening in the computer world with bytes. Coming up, we review 3D Death Chase, The Warlock of Far Top Mountain, and Attack and Bugaboo. We also take a look at the confusing world of joystick interfaces on the spectrum, as well as our usual news, and of course, your letters. Hello and welcome to Bytes, the monthly home computer program. I'm Charles Asford and we've got a bumper show for you today. So let's get straight into it with our first review and it's 3D Death Chase on the ZX Spectrum. First impressions lie. When we first started playing 3D Death Chase, we felt this is pretty dull and then wow, it explodes into one of the best games we have seen on the Spectrum. But let's go back to the start. It's the year 2501, and America is ruled by violent warlords battling for control of the forests. You play the part of a group of elite mercenaries, riders of the big bikes, and you earn your living by chasing enemy riders and destroying them with your guided photon bolts. Okay, let's stop. The story's ridiculous. But let's forget that. In reality, it appears very heavily influenced by driving speeder bikes through the forest of Endor from the superb Star Wars sequel, the Return of the Jedi. Controls are simple, with just left, right, stop, start and fire. You can only fire when riding at top speed and when the enemies are in range. You need to destroy two enemy bikes to get to the next level. Helicopters and tanks also occasionally pop up with a large bonus available if you manage to destroy them. And the controls at first felt a little strange. We couldn't work out why they hadn't gone with the usual QAOP. But then we realised our hands were placed as if we were riding a motorbike, well how we imagine you'd ride a motorbike, and it all clicked into place. As we said before, when we first loaded this up, we felt the 3D graphics were very impressive, especially considering this one's on a 16k spectrum. However, we plodded through the first four levels and felt it was all a bit dull. We breezed through the levels, it didn't seem like there was much of a challenge, but then level 5 hit, and everything gets turned up to 11. The trees you need to avoid suddenly turn from a scatter into a dense forest, requiring us to weave in and out while trying to get to the enemy in our sights. The speed gives an incredibly exciting feeling, and when we ran into a tree we were gasping anguish. But the game is so good you'll get back on the bike and give it another go. Before you realise it, you're well and truly hooked. Death Chase is an absolutely essential purchase for all Spectrum owners. Available for £6.95, this we are giving 10 out of 10 and therefore we are warding it a megabyte. And now it's time for some of your letters. I have a 16k spectrum, but I want to play some of the new games such as Manic Miner. Is it easy to upgrade my spectrum to 48k at home, or should I send it away to a shop? To buy a memory upgrade to install at home it will be about £35. It's a relatively simple upgrade involving a few screws, however it will involve working around fragile electronics and we would recommend, unless you are comfortable with this, taking your Spectrum to your local repair shop and they should be able to install it for about £10 for you. You can find many shops advertising in a computer magazine or your yellow pages. I'm fed up with not being able to use a joystick on my Spectrum. All my C64 friends tease me for having to use the keyboard. I'm confused about which interface to get though. Can you help me to choose one? Well Lee, there are certainly a lot of interfaces around these days, but good news, stay tuned as we have a special feature on joysticks and interfaces later in the program. Exciting news coming out of software projects, where the hit ZX Spectrum game Manic Miner is coming to the C64, and we have this exciting screenshot to whet the appetite. It is rumoured that on release, there will be a prize for the first person to complete the game. We'll bring you more news as we get it, including any update on a rumoured Manic Miner sequel. This month sees the launch of a brand new magazine dedicated to the Spectrum, called Crash, seemingly after the tendency for the Specky to crash during loading a tape, if you so much as look funny at it. It will be released monthly, and cost 75p from Newsfield. Check it out at your local newsagent. We're looking forward to picking up a copy. And finally, science fiction comes true. Your computer can talk. Kura Computers have launched a micro-speech for 
that allows your computer to talk to you with compatible games. Games that will support this include Lunar Jetman, Punchy, Pogo, and many more. Microspeech uses some clever tricks to avoid any slowdown of your games when using the speech function, and 32 software houses have apparently thrown their support behind this, so the future looks good for talking games. You find yourself in the city of Ant Escher, named after we presume Dutch mathematical artist MC Escher. You have to rescue your girlfriend or boyfriend. In a nice change you can choose to play as a boy or a girl. More of this please software developers. Rescue from what you say? By giant ants of course. You start at the outskirts of the city and have to explore the city to find your trapped partner and lead them to safety all the time pursued by the aforementioned ants desperate to make you their dinner. To help you, you have some grenades that you can fire at the ants to send them to ant hell, or jump on them to paralyse them. You can be bitten 20 times before it's game over, but be warned, once trapped, 20 bites can come very quickly. So you'll probably notice from the gameplay footage that this game is graphically stunning. The author Sandy White is a sculptor, and his understanding of 3D construction has enabled him to make what must be one of the best looking Spectrum games we have ever seen we can't see how graphics can get much better than this. You can change the camera angle if you disappear behind a piece of scenery so you'll never get stuck and the whole city is so beautiful you'll just want to explore every inch. However this is where our major gripe of the game comes in. The controls are rather unintuitive. Instead of pressing a key to move in each direction you need to rotate your character and then walk forward in the direction they are facing. When you're being pursued by the ants in a panic, this has caused us much more deaths than we care to mention. With additional keys to throw your grenades at different distances, and the camera changing keys, there are 12 keys in all to learn. We find this far too many to be a good gameplay experience. But even with the control gripes, we have to recommend Ant Attack. The graphics are just so beautiful, and once you manage to get the controls working, the city is so well designed and interesting, you'll just want to play it more and more. With 10 different levels, all in the same city, you will manage to complete the game eventually. While you do, you'll have an amazing time doing so. If Ant Attack's controls were better, this would have been an easy 10. But with the control difficulty, we're rewarding it an 8 out of 10. But we still recommend this highly. Join us after the break as we clear up all the confusion around Spectrum interfaces. Now it's time for another of those witty Heineken commercials. So if you want to nip out and make a cup of tea, now's your chance. Oh, hello, Pert. Haven't you even started yet? Yeah, but Pert, it's, it's all preparation, isn't it? Well, if it's not done by the time I get back from Mother's, there'll be big trouble. So you see, Heineken even refreshes the pets other beers cannot reach. Got any lemonade? If you want. Milk! Ugh! It's one of Ian Rush drinks. Ian Rush? Yeah, and he said if I didn't drink lots of milk, when I grow up, I'm going to be good enough to play for Accrington Stanley. Accrington Stanley? Who are they? Exactly. Now, nah, get off. Give me some. Get off. Here's your chart rundown for February 1984. At 10, based on the movie War Games, it's Computer War. We've just reviewed it, it's Ant Attack at 9. Jetpack flies in at number 8. Losing Altitude is Flight Simulation at 7. Manic Miner shows no sign of dropping in the charts at number 6. Tex Adventure The Hobbit sits around and sings its number 5. Fast Paced Maze Game Splat holds on to number 4. Lunar Jetman is having a blast at number 3. 
and just missing out this month is Valhalla. Staying at number 1 this month is the wonderful Attic Attack. Although all games support it, sometimes the rubber keys of the Spectrum are not the best way to control your character. We're taking a look at the sometimes confusing world of Spectrum joysticks and interfaces. Unlike the C64, the Spectrum was not originally designed for joysticks, and so to use one you will need to invest in an interface. This plugs into the expansion port at the back of your Spectrum and provides a joystick port enabling you to plug one in and start playing. However, it's not quite that easy. There are rather confusingly multiple interface types. However, most joysticks should work with any interface. The first interface type we're going to take a look at is the AGF interface. This can also be referred to as Fotec or Fennel. In basic terms, these will place the cursor keys for directions and the zero key for fire. This means it will have a wide range of compatibility as most games offer a cursor control option. There are also programmable interfaces. These allow you to use a two digit code to map any keys to a direction on the joystick by a rather fiddly system of connecting columns and rows of wires with small clips. The code can be saved alongside the game, so for those games that don't offer a cursor option, this allows the largest compatibility with pretty much any game. You can pick up an AGF interface for around £16 and a programmable interface for around 30 The second interface we're going to take a look at is the Kempston interface. This relies on games being coded to allow use of the Kempston standard as it uses its own input commands instead of mimicking keyboard presses. However, it is quickly becoming the standard and has the largest range of compatible games. Price is around £30 including a joystick. And lastly, we have the official Sinclair interface too. As well as offering a joystick port, it also has space for a ROM cartridge. We'll cover this in a future episode, but the ROM will remove the need for tape loading and offer instant loading of games. But we're here for the joysticks and the keys it maps to are non-standard, being 6, 7, 8, 9 and 0 for fire, meaning games will have to offer a new control option for this to work. We expect new games to start to offer this, but be warned, old games will not be usable with this interface. We would rather that they come up with just one standard instead of a few different ones. It feels very much like Betamax and VHS, but we feel that Kempston has currently the best support throughout, and will be the standard that software houses are using going forward. Is currently our top pick. We're great fans of the fighting fantasy books by Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston here at Bytes, and this is the adaption of the Warlock of Fartop Mountain book on the ZX Spectrum. However, having played the book, we can't see how the game relates to this in any way. In fact, it seems to us like they just slapped the name on a rather generic maze game. We reviewed Antitack earlier and said the controls were cumbersome. However, compared to Warlock of Fartop Mountain, they're positively streamlined. Just take a look at the list of controls you have to try to remember. We recommend you copy out this screen and keep it to with you while playing. Story-wise, you're tasked with entering a complex labyrinth beneath Fartop Mountain to liberate the Warlock of his treasure. Does this make us the bad guy? Even if he's supposedly evil, I'm not sure you could just go in and start stealing treasure. Graphics are nothing to write home about. You wander around a rather barren looking randomly generated maze, so mapping is no use here. Occasionally coming across an enemy you can dispatch with your sword. Well, if you can remember the keys required to use it. It does move at a fast pace, and one nice feature is that you can close doors trapping the enemies behind them. Available for £5.50, or bundled with the original book for £6.95, we recommend sticking with the book. A 4 out of 10. Let's start off by saying Bugaboo is very good, but it could easily have been perfect. We'll get back to that later. But who would have thought that controlling a lowly bug, jumping around a chasm would be so much fun? We didn't, until we played Bugaboo. Is there a story? No, not really. The intro shows you falling down a massive hole in the floor, and you have to get back up to the top. You move your bug around the alien landscape by holding keys on a joystick to set the direction and power of your jump and try to gauge it to land where you want to. Easier said than done. Most of the time you'll tumble back down and down and down and curse as you fall. 
graphics are fun and colourful. And we don't think we've seen cutscenes in a Spectrum or C64 game until now. If trying to time your jumps without falling back down isn't hard enough, there's also a yellow flying dragon determined to make you his mid-afternoon snack. So stay away from him. And he's our biggest gripe in the game. It's challenging enough planning a route out and timing your jumps. Having an unkillable killing machine suddenly appear and eat you has tested our patience on many occasions. And it's safe to say the dragon will haunt your dreams. Can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop ever until you're dead. We encountered the dragon within 20 seconds of starting the game once. Game over. We had a rush of joy when we were about to hit a tiny ledge to be destroyed by a dragon coming from nowhere to snatch us up and eat us. Game over. It's just hovering there on the other side of some rocks knowing there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. Game over. The dragon. The dragon. The dragon. There is a perfect game in here. Remove the dragon and bugaboo at the times without it is a pretty perfect game. It's challenging. Simple to pick up but hard to master, never unfair and infinitely replayable. With the dragon though, it's a chore. You thought it was only a matter of time before your game's ruined with something completely out of your control. This is a prime example of where a poke could make the game so much better. If someone does, and we hope it doesn't take too long, find a poke to remove the dragon, we would be eternally grateful. Scoring this is hard, but we can only go with the game in front of us. And just for the rage the dragon causes us, we give him Bugaboo a 6. However, if someone pokes out that dragon, we are revising our score to a 9. Available for £6.95 on the ZX Spectrum and £7.95 on the C64. That's all we got time for. Join us next month for another exciting episode of Bytes. Happy gaming!